Hi guys, Stogre here for a new World of Warcraft video and this video is an ARMS Warrior PvP guide video. Now I know I prefer playing Fury but it doesn't make me insensitive to the power of ARMS. It is clearly a S tier spec and I want to give you insight about this class for of course lower rated warriors between the 1 and 2k rating. Now, before we start, this video is more targeted for lower rated players and please could you like, comment and subscribe to the channel, it helps me immensely and I really want to improve my style but also my content for you guys. Let me know what you think about this video, positive or negative, any feedback is good feedback for me. Now, let's go back to the video. Let's start about the Covenant that you would like to use in PvP. You have Venthyr, Kyrian and Nightfey. Now with the patch 9.0.5 you will soon maybe make the switch to Necrolord. But for now I didn't test it out, I can't really speak for Necrolord. But in the future once the 9.0.5 is out I can maybe discuss about if it's interesting to make the switch or if you need to stay on your own covenants. I made my choice to go for Night Fae since the damage, the CC and the personness that it can provide suits my playstyle very well. If you want to play Venthyr to have Condemn it is also a very good choice. It doesn't change the whole playstyle since it's only a execute but you can also do some shadow damage with it, but also above 80% and under 35 or 20% HP, depending if you got the talent or not. It just changes your execute so you can cast it on higher HP, but also does shadow damage, very powerful, and a lot of warriors opt for this choice. You could play Kyrian to be very safe and a nuisance for the enemy team. It doesn't do that much damage, but it still helps to keep people in your blade storm and also keep your enemies super close to you. If you want to know why I changed to Night Fae instead of being Kyrian or Venthyr, please make sure you watch this video on top of your screen and you will see why I chose Night Fae and maybe why you should too. So now let's start with the talents that you will use in PvP. We start with the level 15 row, with the obvious but very powerful choice, Sudden Death. It makes your damage a little more random and bursty for the enemy to deal with. It's also always fun to execute people. And for now, Skill Splitter and War Machines aren't really competitors at the moment, uh, especially, especially War Machine, which is only a tall gas power for me. Uh, that is useful to you to have, but at the moment, Sudden Death is the clear choice. On the 25 row I take Stonebolt because I like the extra CC it can provide, it is a stun, but in, but in Battlegrounds you can always go for double time if you prefer the mobility it can provide. On the 30 row I choose a Massacre since I don't feel Rend is doing that much for me at the moment and Feather of Battle breaks CC, so if the rare times I use Slam, I don't want it to use it when someone is sapped, polymorphed or even paralyzed. It breaks CC for nothing, so for now, I prefer Massacre. If you are Venthyr, you should always choose Massacre regardless, because you have more value with your Condemns. On the 35 row, I go for Defensive Stance, which is one of the best defensive in the game, especially for a warrior. Gives you a permanent 20% damage reduction, but also reduces your output by 20% in PvP. You can start the game with Death Stance and then switch if you feel you aren't getting a lot of value on the defense. For example, if they aren't going for you, they are not targeting you, so why stay at Death Stance? Try to switch in Battle Stance, pop Avatar, Blade Storm, pe kill people. I don't know, I prefer to be uh, flexible on that. And a lot of warriors try to stay in Death Stance even though they are not targeted, which is a big mistake in my opinion. In, on the 40 row, it's a wall breaker and only wall breaker talent. AoE damage is nice, especially during sweeping strikes, where you can have a lot of wall breaker effects, like Colossus Smash effects, on all the targets around you. On the 45 row, I play with Avatar, since, it's, since it gives me all the things I like, extra damage, root, snare breaks, and makes you also very big. In for the kill, is for now not a good option for me and I feel like Avatar 
makes it worthwhile and also all the damage it can provide when you're not in death stance but you go in battle stance you can really one shot people when you are popping everything you have on the 50 row i go for dreadnought but on longer matches like for example a red paladin plus healer or druid feral druid plus healer I opt for anger management to war break and blade storm more often. For now, Ravager isn't an option for me. Uh, maybe in battlegrounds, and still, I would still prefer anger management or dreadnought since it does crazy AOE damage. Or uh, anger management gives you more blade storms and war breaker. For PvP talents, I go for storm of destruction, sharp and blades plus war banner, like. If I don't have any choice, I would go for those three. But I often change my PvP talents in function of the enemy team. You have Master and Commander, which is still very good, even though it's nerfed. Um, disarm versus Arms, Reds and DKs. If you feel like you need that defensive and you feel like you need to tempo a lot more than usual. You can go for Overwatch versus Castle, Castle Cleaves, because... It helps your healer to go away, uh, to, to get a polymorph on the mage, but for example, if someone is casting polymorph on your teammate. And sometimes I play with Demolition if it's a double pally comp, but that doesn't happen that often. And still, it is a decision I need to make with my teammates, whether I would go for more defensives or the possibility to uh, get bubbles out of the way more often. Um, for me, defensives are very big, especially the uh, war banner one. It is uh, very good to not get a uh, slowed, but also uh, have CC reducted by uh, two, so it's always nice. Okay, now for your legendary. You can opt for the safest choice, which is unhinged. Makes your blaze storm hit for harder, especially since it can provide the conduits from. Uh, mortal strike uh, it can proc from the conduits from your mortal strike um, like mortal combo for example a uh, sharpened blade also gets applied on your blade storm with unhinged so the uh, healing reduction is even applied on your blade storm which is crazy good I prefer going for simple verse mastery with some crit I really value crit a lot in Shadowlands since I feel the damage is more bursty, I prefer to have that randomness uh, to kill people with one or two crits, especially with Ancient Aftershock. I just prefer to have a mixture if I'm playing arms, I prefer to play with mastery and some crits, and not only mastery and not only crit. I don't value haste that much at the moment, just because uh, we are at season 1, the haste um, numbers are not going crazy, but I, I could review it once it's season 2 or season 3, at that moment maybe haste will be an option for arms. There is also a legendary that I want to build and test it out, and it is the exploiter legendary. It gets buffed, and I wonder how far you can go and make mortal strike a real mortal strike, if you see what I mean. You can also go for misshapen mirrors to be obnoxious versus caustic leaves and try to defend your team as much as possible. For conduits, I like the mortal combo one. Since it applies also on the unhinged procs, and I like the randomness that it can provide. Like sometimes you can moral strike someone, it hits two times in a row, does crit, and people just fall over. If you if you have like all the stars aligned, like for example Avatar, for example uh, Sharpened Blade, those are really nice conduits for me. Um, and I like to combine it with the destructive reverber uh, reverberations which is very strong and it is very fun to use. For endurance conduits, I like to use Stalwart Guardian, but I prefer to use fi Finesse conduits if I have the choice, with the Inspiring pr Presence, effectively healing for around 40% when you use uh, your uh, Command Shout, uh, and especially with your uh, PvP talent. For now, I can explain the burst rotation, but we can what you can do to win matches, of course, depends about the situation and how you can prepare people to go very low HP. What I do is I use Warbreaker with two stacks of overpower plus Mono Strike effect with the Sharpened Blade to give me the possibility to, to then use the Ancient Aftershock and then I like to Bladestorm to finish my targets. 
If they go very low, enough for my execute, then I go into execute phase. Use avatar or any extra buff to enforce and enhance your burst rotation and prepare people to die. If they are stuck together, for, don't forget sweeping strikes and to use ancient aftershock on all targets possible. How many times did I double kill someone with just ancient aftershock plus blade storm? Trust me, it is super satisfying to have the healer watching his DPS suffer from those ancient aftershocks and being cut in one. So you can't heal, you, can, you have to bubble. If you bubble, then you lose still a GCD to um, a heal that you can proc. Um, let's talk comps in twos. You can only play with a healer if you want to be competitive. If you have a red paladin friend or a feral druid or an enhanced shaman, they will need to make a big macro called heal the warrior because that's what they are going to do 100% of the time. You will need a healer in twos if you want to be competitive, especially Especially if you want to climb, you can do with your you can do twos with a mage, you can do twos with a rogue, you can do twos with a windwalker. But guaranteed, if you are going against a good holy paladin or a good resto shaman or a good disc priest, guaranteed you will lose in the first minute of the match because warrior just falls over, and you can play with a DPS, but then you need to count on that DPS to carry your weight. So that's why I'm uh, giving a tip, go for twos, go for a healer. The best healer that you can have is a shaman, since they can throw big heals, but also a good interrupt, which makes your comp obnoxious to play versus a custom comp. Trust me, if you are a healer and you get silenced on your heals, you get interrupted on your heals, you get storm bolted, you get feared, you get... A con <sighs> you can't play versus that comp. And that's why Shaman is one of the better heals at the moment in twos for the warrior. Disc Priest and Holy Paladin are very fine choices, but playing with an excellent Restored Druid also makes your life easier. If they go for Fellow Affinity, trust me, they are going to wipe some asses. In trees, you can go for War Mage comp, Turbo or even TSG, which is with a DK or a Red Paladin. But warriors are very comfortable with the choosing of a team or a comp. In trees, warriors are kind of a king. I would say they have difficulties playing with a rogue, since they are heavily with your stormbolt. And it, I'd say windwalkers do the same as you do. It's strong, but it can be better be paired with an actual support DPS. I will soon make a video about types of melee DPS, healers, ranged, casters. It could be very interesting for you. If you want to try to make an alt, if you want to change mains, you need to know which classes are more of a support and which classes you can actually main. For example, I would never try to pair mage and warlock in your same character pool, since those two are very intensive. You need to learn a lot of their uh, on the classes, and you need to to have a lot of maintenance. But if you play like Elemental Shaman, or if you play like a Shadow Priest, they have little to no maintenance, so you can play Shadow Priest with a Warlock, for example. So you know actually how to deal dots, uh, how to survive without any blinks, without any uh, TPs. So it's very interesting to know, and I will make a video about that. For the end word, of course, Arms Warrior is definitely an S tier class and it is very useful for a lot of comps in twos and in trees. It is very fine and a safe choice to play arms these days. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate this and of course if you could drop if you could drop a like and a comment below that would be very awesome. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like those kind of videos. I'm working on an elemental shaman video but I made a mistake. I went Venter instead of staying Necrolord since I wanted to try enhance. Enhance is not my cup of tea. So now I'm stuck for two weeks to go back to Necrolord, which makes me lose a round of two weeks of videos that I could make for uh, Elemental Shaman, which is one of my favorite classes. But trust me, if you want to know one thing, Venter Elemental is really not fun. So, 
guys have a great day please make sure to prune some noobs to on the battlefield and thank you and see you very soon bye